Hi there, Musitrature Recaps here. Today, I'm explaining a movie called Senentunchi. The movie kicks off with a mother and her little girl heading to the Alps for mushroom picking. The girl spots an unfamiliar boy, capturing her interest with a mirror reflecting the sunlight. He directs her to a meadow abundant with beautiful, edible mushrooms. In the same spot, the child stumbles upon a human skeleton, letting out a horrified scream as she realizes she's standing on someone's grave. Shortly after, the police arrive at the scene, presenting a photo of people who went missing in the area. The girl identifies the boy as Albert, who vanished in 1975. The officer dismisses the possibility, suggesting the girl saw a ghost, but the mother disagrees. She decides to recount a tale from 30 years ago, a narrative that could shake even the most skeptical minds. In the Alpine Mountain village of 1975, local police sheriff Sebastian Roish rushes to the church, discovering a priest hanging from the church tower. The doctor later confirms it was a suicide. The bishop, acknowledging the grave sin, proposes breaking the rules to give the priest a dignified three-day funeral. Shortly after the funeral, a little girl catches Sheriff Roish's attention, pointing out a new arrival in their village. The girl looks distressed and in need of assistance. Roish helps the stranger, bringing her first to Dr. Zing's station. The girl, showing interest in her rescuer, attempts to kiss him. The doctor, arriving at the station, examines the stranger and confirms that her muteness isn't due to a physical defect. The girl reacts oddly to light and is ready to attack anyone she perceives as hostile. Zing suggests handing the unknown girl over to a psychiatric hospital, but Roish refuses, determined to aid her. In the local bar, townsfolk gather to discuss the newly arrived girl. One of the villagers saw a mysterious figure resembling a nun in the mountains, but she vanished when he called out to her. Roish brings the stranger to the same bar to request food and clothes from theirs. A woman who once had feelings for the sheriff warns him to be cautious with the girl. She sees it as no coincidence that the stranger arrived right after the priest's suicide. There's also discovered a toy carved by Albert, a shepherd in the mountains, suspecting something might have happened to him. The villagers grow more hostile towards the girl, suspecting her involvement in the village's unsettling events. Unhappy with her walking free, they urge Roish to send her to jail. The sheriff faces the challenge of ensuring the girl's safety, leading him to decide to lock her in a cell. While Roish believes the girl is innocent, he needs to unravel the mystery. Heading to Mount Thistle, the policeman checks the shepherd's house and discovers it's empty. Animals and weapons are gone, indicating that Albert and Erwin likely went hunting. Unaware that someone in the house needs help, Roish descends the mountain and reassures the locals before returning to the station. There, he encounters a bishop attempting to expel the devil from the girl using a crucifix. Her strong reaction to the cross seems to confirm the clergyman's claims. Unwilling to believe in such nonsense, Roish takes the girl to his house to protect her from the agitated locals. After taking a few photos, he plans to locate the missing stranger, speculating that she may be suffering from amnesia. Although unable to speak or write, the girl draws a cross, hinting at what might have happened to her. The next morning, volunteer Martin arrives in the village to assist Erwin and his new nephew Albert, who lost his parents in an avalanche. Martin, unaccustomed to mountain climbs, struggles with the ascent and has difficulty embracing the local cuisine. Meanwhile, the stranger takes care of Roish, bringing him coffee in bed and expressing sympathy. Learning about the sheriff's unfulfilled dream of being theirs's husband, she empathizes. The stranger replaces theirs's face with her photo, displaying sincerity in her feelings. The mute Albert informs his uncle about a lynx attacking their goat. Erwin, armed with a gun, rushes to help, but the elusive animal escapes, leaving the livestock injured. Martin, a former city doctor's assistant, recognizes the damaged respiratory artery in the suffering sheep. To end its suffering, he takes charge and shoots the goat, breaking its neck. Erwin is unable to do it himself. Roish refuses to believe that the stranger and Senentunchi are the same person, dismissing the notion of witches and otherworldly forces. While at the archive, 
he reviews a 1950 newspaper clipping. Despite 25 years passing, the girl appears unchanged, unsettling the sheriff. However, he remains determined to find a logical explanation. Leaving the stranger with the mayor, Royce heads to the valley to meet Commissioner Matter, who worked at the time. It is revealed that the girl was considered a gypsy, and after three people burned down, she disappeared without a trace. Meanwhile, a stranger constructs a man-shaped figure using chains and shoes, catching the mayor's attention. Nader, preoccupied with work, shows no interest. Seizing the opportunity, the bishop attacks the girl, attempting to expel the devil and end the vessel containing him. The mayor intervenes in time, protecting the girl from the bishop, who frightens her away. The stranger seeks refuge in theirs's bar, but the pregnant woman believes her to be Senentunchi. Theirs, feeling threatened, uses bread with a drawn cross to check for aggression. Martin, Irwin, and Albert, seeking relaxation, consume strong alcohol. Feeling the need for entertainment, they decide to create Senentunchi, a doll made of a broom, rags, and hay, believed to come to life and fulfill any desires of its creator. Irwin shares the legend that in 1953, shepherds had already summoned Senentunchi, who not only cooked but also brought happiness and pleasure to men. Pronouncing the spell and performing the ritual, the trio summons Senentunchi and, in their drunken delirium, envisions a girl made of straw before them. Roish returns to the village and discovers that theirs has lost her child. Blaming the girl for the tragedy, theirs believes she is a witch or the embodiment of the devil. On the morning of Nader and theirs's baby's funeral, the bishop turns the villagers against the girl, claiming she is the devil's incarnation and responsible for the baby's fate. To support his theory, the clergyman presents an article and a photograph from 25 years ago featuring a young gypsy woman resembling the girl. Albert wakes up in the morning, startled to find a girl in their house. Unaware that she's the stranger who fled the village, he assumes she's the Senentunchi summoned the previous night. Martin and Irwin are equally shocked and attempt to befriend the shy, wild, and cautious stranger. Martin realizes the girl is genuinely real and suggests going to the village to report her before the police arrive. Initially agreeing, Irwin later observes the girl's strange behavior and lack of understanding. Seducing her and taking her away, Irwin remains unaware that Albert is witnessing the unfolding events. Meanwhile, Roish contacts the former sheriff and discovers that he passed away due to a heart attack. Shortly after, he receives information from the city, stating that Martin is a wanted criminal who took his girlfriend's life. Simultaneously, Martin proposes to Irwin to release the stranger so she can return to the village. Irwin opposes this idea, so Martin suggests the girl run away when Irwin is occupied. Noticing the girl's absence, Irwin pursues the couple, leaving Albert with a gun to guard the house. The girl, fearing a return to the village, escapes. Martin catches her, and they try to evade Irwin, who is in pursuit. Seizing the opportunity, Martin grabs the girl and returns to the shepherd's house. He playfully startles Albert, prompting him to accidentally shoot, and Irwin hastily retreats up the mountain. Realizing they can share the girl, the men decide to keep her. In the evening, they gather around a fire, and Irwin reveals that he is Albert's biological father. Believing the stranger could be his first girlfriend, Irwin is excited. However, Albert, frightened, hides in the barn, unsure of how to handle the situation. The men continue drinking and bring the girl into the house for a threesome. At one point, she attempts to resist and bites Martin's hand, but it doesn't lead to any positive outcome. During the night, while the men are asleep, the girl escapes, armed with a knife that might help her deal with the offenders. Roish is awakened by a knock on the door and finds a frightened stranger seeking his help. Recognizing that he's her only hope, the sheriff decides to take the girl to another city. On their way, villagers block the road with a truck, causing Roish to have an accident. Although the girl manages to escape, the sheriff is beaten by the mayor and others who are convinced that she is Senentunchi. Early in the morning, Albert tries to wake up Erwin and Martin to show them a gruesome scene. 
In the barn, the men discover gutted animal carcasses, realizing that the girl is not only dangerous but also very cruel. Unaware that she is hiding in the same barn, Erwin goes hunting for the stranger. Martin decides to help her and locks the girl in a nearby building, promising to release her as soon as the shepherd leaves to find her. Returning home, Roish notices a specific church symbol in the form of a cross on the wall. Recalling the drawing of the girl, he realizes that they are identical, and it's not without reason. Armed with a revolver, the sheriff goes to the church and discovers a secret passage to the basement, where the stranger had been living all this time. Meanwhile, Martin's condition worsens due to the bite, leading to a blood infection. Berwin suggests going to the village for medical help, but Martin refuses, confessing to a terrible crime. In an effort to assist Martin, the shepherd asks Albert to fetch a bottle of alcohol. Albert heads to the shed where the girl is held, and fearing for her safety, she strikes him on the head as soon as he enters. Erwin spots the girl in the barn and, after blocking the door, attempts to set it on fire. The stranger escapes through a hole in the roof, but Albert remains trapped. Realizing his mistake, Erwin saves his son. Albert speaks, addressing him as dad for the first time before falling into eternal sleep. Distraught and seeing the girl outside the window, Erwin attacks her, striking her on the head with a stool. Roish meets with the bishop and arrests him for the crimes he committed. The sheriff realizes that the gypsy woman in the 25-year-old photo was the mother of the girl, held captive by the priest. The bishop had exploited the woman, leading to the birth of their daughter. The deaths of the three shepherds and the priests were orchestrated by the bishop, covering up his crimes. He was responsible for pushing the gypsy woman off a cliff and keeping his own daughter captive in the church basement. A few days ago, a girl living in isolation escapes when a priest brings her food. Realizing the horror committed by the bishop, Roish arrests him and sends him to jail. The girl informs the sheriff that she saw another girl on the mountain. Meanwhile, Erwin captures the stranger and attempts to exorcise the devil by threatening her with a cross. Martin's condition worsens, but he protects the innocent victim, convinced she is an ordinary person. He demands Erwin let her go, and when Erwin doesn't comply, he's wounded in the arm, submitting to Martin. Seeking revenge, the girl grabs a knife and takes Erwin's life. Sheriff Roish climbs the mountain and senses something strange in the house. He encounters a girl infatuated with him and shares tea with her. She leads him to the barn, where he discovers dolls made from the skins and bodies of Albert, Martin, and Erwin. The girl believed in the legend of the Senentunchi, hoping it would bring them back to life. Roish is shocked, realizing the events happened six days before their first meeting. Erwin, Martin, and Albert bid farewell to life over a week ago, and their truth will remain unknown. Angry and caught off guard, Roish tries to arrest the girl, but she escapes in fear. Unaware of the danger in the thick fog, she falls off a cliff. The sheriff descends, realizing that not only this girl but dozens of others have bid farewell to life in the same way. Overwhelmed by guilt, Roish takes his own life. In the present, the police discover the skeleton of the same girl, realizing she was an ordinary person subjected to false rumors spread by the bishop to deceive people and here the movie ends. Thank you for watching.